So who the fuck is it? I don't know, but it isn't because this is my Instagram there, and you're not, all, there you are. Well, there I am. <laughs> Stan, you're there. You're still here. I'm still in bed. You're still in your bed. No, you have to get out of the bed. It's or you have things to do today. No. I, I think I'm. I'm sort of depressed. <laughs> I think I'm going to stay in bed all day. No, no, you can't. You have to get out of the bed. No, say yes, dear. Yes, dear. Thank you very much. And then you have to go to the gym. The gym. The G Y M. Do I really have to do that? Are you sure? Yeah. Say yes, dear. You have to do that. Yes, dear to go so that we'll be able to walk around. Otherwise, it's no use, you know what I mean? OK, dear. All right, how's the weather? It's California. It's 70 degrees out there. It's beautiful. I'm in bed, though. I'm staying in bed. OK, Stan, now please get out of the bed, OK? OK, I'll get out of bed. OK. I'll speak to you later. Bye, darling. OK, bye. I don't know. <laughs> Men, you know what I mean? Hopeless. George Brown was having a party. Stanley went there and he met this film director who said they started talking. And the film director said, I'm editing a movie. Would you like to come and see it? And Stanley said, of course. And I'm looking at the scene of Dennis Hopper and this gorgeous girl on a bunk in a train, and they're having this love scene, and it's shot on a wide-angle lens, so they're all, their faces are all distorted, and they're slapping each other and licking each other. And I'm thinking, oh, God, what am I going to say when the lights go on? And the door opened, and this guy wa walked in, and that was Barbara. California, I live in New York. We have different lives, we're different people. I can't live in California because I'm a New York girl, because I'm on the subway, because I'm walking in the streets, and because everybody drives a car. I'd be driving, I'd be looking for the boutiques, I'd be looking for someone who was gorgeous or whatever, and somebody would be dead. It's no use. Uh, we, we talk, I don't know, 15 or 20 times a day, it's just casual talking. Was it hot today? Desperately hot again, you know, so I just stay inside with the air conditioning going. You should see the color of my toes. Are they the same color or the different color? They're a different color. Well, they are purple with purple sparkle on them. They're just extraordinary. Hello, hello. We're in the taxi going down to Orso now. I get a call. I'm getting my hair done. Oh, he just went over a bump. Can you please drive slower, driver? And, you know, this is the call. And I'm saying, well, I'm going to play golf. What are you going to do today? I'm going to play a little golf, a little golf with the boys. Well, are you going to walk or go in the cart? I'm going to go in the cart. I think it would be nice to walk a little bit, just a no, little bit. No, no, too hot, too hot. Like people text, I would call up and say, I'm going to the hairdresser. You know, just, I guess that's like people text, only I'm doing it on the telephone. Everybody's walking on the street these days like this. Nobody is looking up, even in restaurants. Everybody is like this. In the other world, before this, you had to talk to the person. You had to relate to the human being. I cannot imagine in the 60s or 70s, anybody would have gone on a machine to look for someone to go out with. You're going out with someone, you've got a little list of what they do, who they are, where they came from, what they ate for breakfast. This is my mother. That's a young lady. Where was she? In South Africa. She came from she came from Russia. What was her name? Uh Gertie. Gertrude. Gertie. Gertie, yeah. And what was your father's name? Leslie. It was Leslie. He was born in South Africa. I got involved with the African Musicians Union. 
and we put on a show. And there was a young girl called Maria Makeba, who was 18. And there was a young boy called Hugh Masekela, who was 12. And we played to a mixed audience. There's never been a mixed audience in the history of South Africa. We had police lining the hall inside. I mean, they couldn't believe it, what was going on. And a few days after the show, I had a call from the police saying, would you please bring your passport to the police station for perusal? And I had a very good friend who was a big lawyer and a friend of Mandela. And he said, you're leaving tonight. They could put you in jail for 90 days without a trial. At the end of 90 days, as you walk out, they arrest you again, put you to, they're just people in there for years without ever coming to trial. They so said, you're leaving tonight. Now to leave my family, which is why I joined television, because I had to make the money to get them out. This, this the show I'd co-created, called Top of the Pops. This me and Johnny Pearson, the musical director. What about the picture about that? I don't know, it's Babs without any top on. I don't know when we took it or where. It was uh, pretty nice. In England, television sold records, much more than radio. So if you got on top of the pops, you, you sold a lot of records. Pretty much every major songwriter in America and in England did the show. Well, a great memory is the first thing that John Lennon did away from the Beatles. He came in and did a single live. I got a camera on Yoko and she had a sanitary towel wrapped around her eye as a blindfold. And this is for six o'clock kids, so we didn't take a close up of Yoko. You better get yourself together, darling. Join the human race. But that was a great thing to do, John singing live by himself for the first time, which is brilliant. This was the mannequin agency, and we were we did a lot of runways. Let me see where I am here. Here I am. <laughs> There's me. I see. It with the funny hairdo. I wish I had some of these clothes today, actually. They're just marvelous. This is sort of when I was just beginning. I was shooting for Capizio and the Leotards. This was the long-haired period of my career. Mickey Moto showing off their pearls. And oh my God, those lashes. The eyelashes. My most favorite person was Rudy Gernreich. And I was one of his girls. Rudy Gernreich, fashion runway show. The New York Times pictures of one of the Gernreich shows. Me, Ellen Harth, and Peggy Moffat with our tops hanging out. It caused quite a sensation when this hit the New York Times. I'm wearing a bathing suit with the top. This is Henry Jaglin and myself during the shooting of his first movie called A Safe Place with Tuesday Weld. Me, Tuesday, Jack Nicholson. This was a film called Tracks with Dennis Hopper and Dean Stockwell and myself. We know that story. I think we've already heard that story. So. Isn't that how you met Stanley? It is. It's, I met Stanley through Henry Jagland. Just went from Henry Jagland to Stanley Dorfman. It was a great move. Whenever I was modeling and doing shows, the designers would say, bring your own accessories. And then I thought, I'll find a couple of designers who do interesting pieces of jewelry, and I'll form a little boutique that travels around and shows things to people. And I thought, I'm going to call this business Flood's Closet. And that's how the whole thing started. I don't particularly go for name brands. I just go for what I respond to. I can't have anything in my business that I try to sell. That's not something that I love. It has to be something I love. I might not necessarily wear it, but it has to be something that I smile when I see it.
I must tell you that when I first saw this place, the entire house was brown. Wood panels, all dark brown. Awful. And he loved it. I said, no, we can't have this. It has to be white. It took me five years to convince him to paint it white. All the pillows, the rugs, the tables, the lamps, except for Stanley's art, came from the flea markets. So this goes right into this also now white bedroom. This is the first thing I bought for the entire house, and it just set the tone for this little room, which is very small, very simple, but is so Los Angeles. And there's a little curtain that rolls up, and you can see the whole mountains in the morning. And I, I'm so happy here. In New York, I live in a much bigger space, but this space, to me, um, says Los Angeles and says Stanley, so I, I'm really happy here. Was there ever a time in your life where you thought about living in the same place? No. Not at all. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about this romance. You and Stanley are dating, and it's starting to get serious, and he's in L.A., and you're in New York. Did and we're bi-coastal. You're bi-coastal. Did you ever have, like, the talk? Do you know, I've never had a talk with anybody I've ever been with. I've never said, Let's, are we just going to be together? Are we going to see other people? I've never done that in my whole life. One shouldn't have to worry about, is she, is he, what are they doing? Jealousy is not part of my DNA. I was never jealous. We've had our own lives, we've had our own beings, but here we are, Barbara and Stanley. You know, what more could a girl want, you know? She goes to sleep at 3 o'clock in the morning. Now, when we're together, she still goes to bed at 3 o'clock. But now I have to go to bed at 3 o'clock as well. She's like the energizer bunny. I mean, she never, never stops. She's just she's on the go all the time. Unbelievable energy. And I don't have it, any energy. We're going. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I have to recover. They press. You don't need to do that. Why? Because they do it downstairs. Oh, they know we're in here. It's like Big Daddy. Oh, they've got a camera or something. I don't <laughs> Big know. Daddy does everything. You I don't, don't know. understand anything. He's just a simple boy from L.A. I'm a simple boy from the country. Let's go. I love New York, and I love to come to New York, obviously, because of Barbara. Uh, but I love to get back to that openness, as opposed to the intensity in New York. New York is very intense. It's intense. It's a go, go, go. And he's not a go, go, go. I'm not, I'm not I'm a go, go. I'm a stay, stay, stay. <laughs> the challenge is uh, loneliness the lonely times I have without her. What do you do? I sleep and rest on this couch, or I go and play golf. This is an old painting from the 50s, which was stored in London. Uh, Barbara rescued them, brought them here. But this one is in pretty crappy shape. So I'm really going over it and repairing it. Barbara bought me an easel. And uh, for years, I hung my Calvin Klein underpants on it after I washed them. You know. And I met a guy called Shane Gafog, very, very good painter. And he came to my house and he said, well, who is painting these of these? And I said, well, they're mine from way back. So he said, well, you've got to paint. One day he started painting. And that started a whole second life for him again. And it was marvelous. We seem to have a connection that goes far beyond a guy and a girl. We seem to have a we that goes through everything. 
He understands me completely. And he is very caring and very protective of me. So I feel completely safe with him to do whatever I want, to be whoever I want, to carry on as much as I want, and to have my life, because I know he'll be there always surrounding me. This is a great way to be. You're with somebody, you're unconditionally with them, they're, you're happy with them, but at the same time, you have your own life, and you can do whatever you want. And you're, you're not responsible for somebody, and you don't have to report to somebody. You just have to share with somebody. It's been a fascinating adventure. Who knows what's going to happen next week? We'll see. Got to get an outfit for it. <laughs> I'll have to get an outfit for it, too. You never know. You never know. Manhattan <laughs> He's got 150 following you. There's the people who are following you. Yes. And 165 followers. What's the difference between followers and following? Mm, it's a very <laughs> good question. And 37 posts means 37 pictures? I think 37, you've got 37, all these, these little pictures, yes. And how do I post another picture? You go, I, you know, I learned about this. You go to that. Do I have this on my Instagram? No. Well, let's put you want that this? on. Yes, put it okay. on. Okay. Then me. you go, um, mm. to Let's next. See. I just learned about it, and I'm <laughs> trying to remember. <clears throat> go to next. Mm hmm. Then. You want to write a caption to it. Stanley at his, with his paintings. Those aren't paintings, those are people. Pe with, with his people and his paintings. Aren't there paintings behind there? Stan what about a hashtag? Okay. What is hashtag? Stanley, friends, oh. and there it is. It's on your Instagram. No, it's on somebody else's <laughs> this, Instagram. This is your Instagram. No, darling, it isn't. Well, really? Who, who, no, it isn't. So who the fuck is it? I don't know, but it isn't because this is my Instagram there, and you're not on, there. You are. Well, there I am. You put it on. It's I put great. it on. Yes, I put it on twice, twice. Twice, in fact. How do you eliminate it? It's like who's on first. I don't know how you eliminate <laughs> it. That's <laughs> hard. Yes, I mean. But twice. also, we want to know how to do hashtag. What that means? I don't even know what it means.